And now, our feature presentation. Hello guys, it's 899 here and welcome to this video. As you can see, I'm currently surrounded by NRL positions. This is actually going to be my picks for the New South Wales State of Origin team for 2021. There is going to be a bit of side uh, side notes here. Obviously, this is my personal pick. It's obviously not going to be 100% to everybody. So everyone's going to have their own tit for tat. So basically, this is my one. Tell me if you do disagree uh, from my picks of who you would actually have in the comments below. So I guess we could just get into it. So first up we are going to look at is the fullback role. And I'm just going to make it obvious, just really obvious quickly because it's going to be fairly certain who's going to be picked. That of course is going to be James Tedesco. It's uh, it's pretty much a sure thing recently. He's been very deeply uh, grinded into this uh, the uh, the Brad Fittler uh, New South Wales uh, structure. And uh, I would feel a little bit interesting because I do feel there is a few more. Full, a few different fullbacks that have probably have had a better season so far than Tedesco, but uh, in terms for the core, it's going to be selected that James Tedesco will be the fullback for New South Wales. And next up is we're going to be looking at the wings, and on one of the wings, <laughs> doesn't really matter in terms of like side positioning, it's just going to be very vague, but I am picking probably the most on-form player in the NRL right now, and also a very big favourite for the Blue Sands. It is, of course, Josh Addo Carr. Uh, there's not a lot to really to say about him. Within 90 minutes of football, he got seven tries, six against Souths in uh, the previous round, and then round one, and and, and one in the uh, in Magic round. So it's going to be very hopefully hoping that he can actually carry over his form from the Melbourne Storm to this New South Wales team because he's really come into his own in terms of probably I'd probably say as like one of the the main star when it comes to rugby league who is not a Penrith player because Penrith have been dominating in term but definitely in terms of the ladder and in terms of their player player core and speaking of that core here is probably the first of one of my few eyebrow raising picks in terms of who's going to be in terms of uh position picking for the other wing, I'm actually going to go, because a few other people have talked about this before, I'm going to go with Brian Toa from the Penrith Panthers. There's nothing much else that you can really say about Penrith. They are 10-0, and, and their structure has really gotten them out. Because I was looking, before doing this in terms of doing research, I looked at the entire like injury reports from all the clubs. The one thing that is a big thing with Penrith is they are the only team that has got zero injuries. And I know there's a lot of other clubs that's got a fair amount. One being example is the uh, the Roosters being a big one. So I feel like we do need to look into Penrith of getting their uh, of getting some players allegiances to come over. Because we've already got uh, Nathan Cleary as the halfback. I mean that is going to be a little bit of a spoiler in terms of who the halfback's going to be, but let's be honest, it wasn't going to be anybody else, to be completely honest. But, uh, yeah, so I do feel that Brian Toho should be the other winger for the New South Wales team. Now we move into the centres, and the first centre here is probably the, is arguably, ever since he's come back, he has reshaped the Manly Sea Eagles and has truly come into, truly come into his own as one of the league's biggest players. It is, of course, Turbo Tom, Tom Travojevic. There is literally nothing you could say about him ever since he's come back for Manly. Manly have been a, one, been a team, have been a team wrecking crew in terms of uh, just the overall, like, completeness that he brings to the team. It's Jake Travojevic is made a completely different player when Tom is with him. And it is something that's going to be very essential for New South Wales. And now here comes another one of these picks that are going to be... There's going to be a little bit of a very Penrith central theme here with this State of Origin pick. So for the center, the other center, I'm going to go with... Uh, if I can actually... If I can find it. I'm going with Stephen Crichton as well from Penrith. 
I think that Crichton and Toho linking up together is going to be a very, very good uh, pairing for this New South Wales team with chemistry. Like, I know, obviously, if this was a, a FIFA-style thing that have top chemistry and all that, but I definitely feel like a, a combination like this will be very beneficial for New South Wales. And that obviously does bring up the question of, where's Latrell Mitchell? The thing is, though, yes, he is suspended, but I personally don't think... Relatively, he hasn't exactly done a lot. In my personal opinion, I don't think he's done a lot this season to be warranted of being put in the New South Wales team. Like, I know he's been... He was suspended for about five weeks. But I just feel like... Not not for the first game. Maybe for, like, game two and three, if there does need to be changes, then I will... Then you'll definitely have to put Latrell Mitchell in. Now, for the 5 8 and halfback. The halfback, I mean, it was definitely very clear, p pardon the pun, on who the halfback is going to be. It is, of course, going to be Nathan Cleary. I mean, he is basically the poster boy when it comes to New South Wales. But for the 5 8 I'm going to go to uh, another Penrith player. <laughs> I know that not all of these Penrith players are going to get selected. Like, I'm, I have a high doubt that Brian Toe and Stephen Crichton will be selected. But if we were to pick another Penrith player to be brought into this team, then I'm going to go with Jerome Luai. It's just... There is a reason why Penrith have been controlling, controlling so well this season. And these two players here have been a major factor to this. Is this also a method of sabotage so uh, Penrith start losing games? Is you just take out half of their players when it comes to origin? Maybe. But we'll continue. Now with Hawker, there's, in my opinion, really only one person you can really take for Hawker. It's going to be, of course, Damian Cook for South Sydney. He's been very good for them so far this season. Uh, obviously, minus the uh, very big uh, hip hiccup that came from the Melbourne Storm. But uh, yeah, Damian Cook, he's a been a very solid hooker for New South Wales ever since he's come into the position. Now when it comes to the props, I'm going to make a, make two uh, issues. I'm going to bring in Daniel Saifiti and Payne Haas. Two players that are very familiar with the New South Wales team. I am a bit hesitant of putting a Knights player in here because in terms of the uh, the backs, the Knights haven't really gone that well. But I do feel like if you were to pick one, it would be Daniel Saifiti. And Saifiti is, has been a part of this uh, Brad Fittler New South Wales for a while. So I do have a feeling he is going to get picked. But in terms of players like David Klemmer and uh, Tyson Frizzell, I don't think they really warrant to being in the New South Wales team, to be completely honest. Because I don't think they deserved it. Because they haven't played that well. Now for the second rowers, I'm going to bring in... I am going to bring in a Roosters player... One I feel like doesn't get as much credit as he deserves. I'm going to bring in Angus Crichton. Big post media games. And then I'm going to bring in Tavitai Pangai Jr. So there's going to be the connectedness of Payne Haas and Pangai Jr. from Brisbane. Probably Brisbane, two of Brisbane's best players at the moment. And you got Angus Crichton there. Maybe I'd say probably one of the most underrated players in the NRL. To, to fairly say. And I think... Because in terms of like the uh, or like the second rowers, New South Wales hasn't really got that much of a pick. In terms of, of players, it's like Aaron Woods, but it's like I don't feel Aaron Woods has, has done that well to be picked, in my personal opinion. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to go with Angus Crichton and Topangai Jr. in the uh, second rows. And now at lock, it is going to have the other Trebojevic brother. We are going to, of course, bring in uh, Jake Trebojevic. Very solid lock, especially when he played. It was very, it was actually pretty good when he was um, when Manly were struggling. But it's just when he's with his brother, his team is just on another complete level, and that's going to be very essential for Tom to succeed. As if Jack's alongside him. Now we come to the interchange, and this is going to be, this is probably going to be where majority of the uh, the comments will come from. This. So the first one I'm going to pick for the Warrington because I picked two uh, forwards and two backs. For the interchange. So the first one I'm picking is... Uh, oh, shit. Hang on. I think, uh, I'm going to pick is... Oh, where is he? The first one I'm going to pick is Jack Whiten from the Canberra Raiders. I think he's... He's been a very... Uh, 
very good uh, five eight for him, and I feel like he could come in maybe when uh to try to if something happens to Jerome Luai, and I feel like even anyways for the season for the actual series, he will actually become the uh, five eight for New South Wales. Now it comes to the other interchange, and this will be the second uh pick that I will make for the from for a. Uh, for a, a, a backs into no forwards interchange, and this will be Ryan Pappenhausen, because I don't understand why Pappenhausen is one of the best fullbacks in the game. I feel like he could slip into anywhere, maybe on the wings, even into the centres alongside uh, Ado Car, depending on what happens with Jabojevic. Be pretty scary to say the least of having having Pappenhausen, even Pappenhausen putting uh, taking away from Tedesco. I think would actually be a pretty good pick to be honest now we go to the two forwards that i'm going to be no yeah forwards no backs i'm getting confused of why i call forwards are the and the backs because forwards are the uh fuck's sake it's 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 a long day so for the <laughs> long day it's 7 30 in the morning so this one is going to be an, also a very interesting one but i'm going to put tyrone peachy in from the gold coast titans Peachy's actually been probably, into, along with Angus Cronin, I would even say that Tyron Peachy is the most underrated player currently in the NRL. He's been doing very good stuff with the uh, the, the Gold Coast Titans. I don't think that they did ha hit a bit of a speed bump against uh, the Penrith at uh, at Magic Round, but then again, every team has suffered a bit of a road uh, a bit of a roadblock when it comes to Penrith at the moment. But um, yeah, I personally feel that Tyron Peachy could come in. Maybe in the hookers, hooker role if uh, for Damian Cork if something happens to him. Even putting him in as lock for uh, Jack Jabovic because Preachy can control the game from the lock. All you need to do is look at his uh, performance against uh, South Sydney and uh, the West Tigers, and you can clearly see that he is a very very talented player. And the last one in a change is probably going to be one of the true workhorses of the game. I love myself a big forward. And I'm going to be picking Campbell Gillard from Parramatta. I know Parramatta are currently in a little bit of a strife because of uh, some of the um, situations that have surrounded them over the past year. But I do believe Campbell Gillard is one of the big sav saving graces. Why am I saying like they're shit? They're not. Parramatta aren't shit. They're actually one of the best teams in the comp. I don't know why I said, said it like that. But anyway, <laughs> anyways, he's... One of the big power workhorses of getting those post-contact me meters, and I believe he should get a call up to that New South Wales team. So that is my New South Wales team. Uh, obviously, there's going to be people that are going to disagree. So, what do you think should happen for this New South Wales team? And should I do one for Queensland? Even though, if you pointed a gun at my head to name any players from last year's uh, so last year's team, I could probably name four of them. So that would be pop video might be a disaster, but if you want to see it, let me know. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all later.